Welcome to the One Within All. My name is Chance and this is Interverse. One of the main mission statements of this podcast is to highlight the habits and attitudes of creative people who are living outside the box and following their own path in a harmonious way. I'm always inspired by meeting people who match that description, especially the enthusiastic newcomers on the wild and less traveled paths of self-reliance. And today, in a rare two-for-one combo, we've got a dynamic duo who drives around the nation serving futuristic frozen desserts to festival goers who often become new friends. Bree Schott and Kelvin Pearson are the minds behind Space Fruit Food Truck, which they'll be telling us all about in this conversation. And I know it's going to be really fun because I had a total blast when I boarded their mothership truck a few months back. As always, remember you can check out the show notes for links to Space Fruit on social media and a link to the music for this episode by Infio. And also you should know there's an extended version of this podcast that gives you double the amount of conversational amusement and consciousness contorting content. And by subscribing, you'll get early access to the episodes. To check out the plus extensions, all you've got to do is go to patreon.com forward slash interverse or find the link in the show notes. And you know, I'd never want to put you through the agony of me reading fake ads to you just to make money. So if you appreciate that, it would be ultra kind and generous and swell of you to support the show if you like it, via Patreon. Now, with all that out of the way, let's get down to business with the funkiest fruit slingers in the known galaxy. The coolest interstellar snack shop on lot are intrepid captains of the Space Fruit Food Truck. Bree, Kelvin, welcome to the show. (laughs) That was so awesome. Wow, I feel honored. Um, Yeah, so I'm I'm Bree, obviously, and this is... I'm Kelvin. Yeah, (laughs) and uh, we started Space Fruit barely two years ago yeah about two years it was like november of 2016 so yeah we we kind of had this like crazy idea in kelvin's family that has been like really coming to be for the last 15 years his dad and college roommate I've been working on this like awesome invention, you know, and we got to be a part of that by bringing their their food to a food truck. So Space Fruit is basically, we call it, it's like a, it's like a truck. It's more than just a truck. It's kind of a project we have, but the fruit that we sell is like so awesome. So basically what we have are these amazing fruit pools. It's like reinvented Dippin' Dots. We extract the pulps of oranges and then combine them with fruit puree from you know whatever different flavored fruit and everything is flash frozen in liquid nitrogen so it's like heavy dipping dots and we get to use it as a platform to meet people and kind of figure out what we can do and test ourselves and see see where we can take it and see the, you know, see who we get to meet, what we get to see. But I would say space fruit is more of like the experience that you get when you come up to the truck and we talk to you because we'll talk forever. So that's like kind of what we, would you say that that's like more what space fruit is? Yeah. Space fruit is kind of like a place you can just come hang out and uh, just feel safe, be safe at a festival, you know, a good, good point in any, and any festival for relaxing and being good people and also sharing some fruit bowls, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> what you guys are describing with space fruit is that basically you've got your own spaceship to travel around the cosmos in, at least the, uh, the local <laughs> ground cosmos and you <laughs> meet all kinds of people, you give them good vibes, but what's really excellent about space fruit as sort of like a, it is like a treat or a dessert, I guess, but really you're, you're feeding people fruit and mm-hmm. people that are out in the hot sun and an event, I, a lot of them drinking beer and stuff, they're not well hydrated. So fruit actually comes to bear as an extremely essential thing that a lot of people just completely forego uh, in, in real life, nevertheless, festivals. Right. No, absolutely. And I, that's kind of like one of our favorite things is that we actually don't have to like you know say it's one thing but it's really the other like it's actually so nice to serve something that is so raw and organic but not yeah yeah so it's it's good for you and it's like 
tastes amazing. It tastes amazing. That's the most important but part. it's so simple. It's fruit, and like everybody likes fruit, and it's way more fun to eat in the little space balls, right? Oh yeah, it takes me right back to being a kid at amusement parks or at the mall and seeing the dip and dots thing and going, I want that, I want that, I want that. Except and now I'm an adult having that same exact reaction. I think I had like four or five servings whenever I met you guys. It was well, I'm, <laughs> and I don't have to even be like concerned about that because you can't really go overboard on fruit anyway. It's right. totally a win win. Right. Like your mom's, you know, this time she's not there to tell you to stop because you can't eat like 85 trillion grams of sugar, but this time you, you can. So it's just, it's just straight up fruit. The other thing that I was impressed with, cause I got to come inside the truck was because you've kind of, you've got it pre-made and, uh, you don't really have to do anything other than scoop it out for people and take their money. So you really can just kind of like hang out with them. <laughs> You're not like trying to prepare a complicated meal. All the, all the glory to food trucks who have amazingly diverse menus that they prepare fresh. That's definitely an awesome oh, thing. Man. But you guys have a smart gig for real. <laughs> we try. No, I mean, we work though. Like we were saying, we've uh, uh, recently started working with a friend vendor that does Thai noodles. So we are like totally trying to immerse ourselves in all the moving parts of food vending and just like how difficult it is to like make what, how many noodles do we make? Oh yeah. Just making food for mass amounts of people is always just super difficult. You know, I, we work so much on the other food trucks and stuff that, yeah, we don't get to talk to as many people because I'm stuck at a grill, you know, for multiple hours a day. Which is still fun. Oh, like it is, I, I like, way, per, I'm like, oh my goodness. Like I take my hat off to all of these, you know, this is like a lifelong thing on the grill and the, in the high heat, but it's awesome. It's a labor of love. Like that is a service it to is. humanity to be, especially the ones that serve healthier food options. Oh my gosh. No, it is, it is wild. I, we have learned a lot. So, but yeah, we are stoked about just like having time to meet people though. So, you know, we don't, we don't have to slave away all day in the heat over a grill to feed people in a sense. I mean, it's more of a snack. You're not, it's not like a, it's not like a full on meal, but more of a snack or something to cool you down. But then we get to talk to him. That's so fun. We love to like invite people like, you know, into the trailer. Like it's not, I don't know. Sometimes you get the sense that they're doing one thing and you're doing the other. But I want to be there with everyone. Yeah. We want to be there with you. Like that's why we're there. Why else would we be there? You know? Exactly. Why would you be working hard to at what's supposed to be a party for everybody else? Unless you just really wanted to be at more of those things than the average person gets to go to. And that's similar to all people who get into vending at festivals. It's really for a love of the community more for most people that get into that type of work. It's not really about like, oh, yeah. this is the way I'm going to make a billion dollars. <laughs> not saying that you don't have the potential to do great with any kind of vendor or food truck or something. I mean, especially if you start making it to larger events, that can be very profitable. But it is it is a type of service to humanity, I think, that is really underrated especially outside of the festival world i would say like the way that culture in general and society has this like barrier between you and uh service person x and they're supposed to just be like a, a robot butler slave type of thing and be really polite and perfect to you and if you get a pissy they have to act like nothing's going on and like it's a really weird dynamic i feel like we're addicted culturally to almost like a master slave dynamic in our lives and in our interactions with people. And we just take turns uh, switching roles, but we don't call it what it is. I don't know. You follow? I'm totally following. Yeah. There's like some disconnect or expectation between like, uh, you know, maybe like a waitress or something when you go out to eat, like there, there totally is. And like, even after working in the service industry, we were, I, my friends and I were just talking about this. Like you still like when your food's taking a long time, you're still like, Oh, well, you know, Oh my gosh. It's like, I, I, I've been there. I've been back there. I know how frustrating it can get. 
but yeah, there is a disconnect. So having a platform to like kind of break down that wall or that separation is cool. And well, that's the great thing about Festy Life is that whenever we go to festivals, the the lot of us, even if we've never met, we're all basically instant friends for the weekend. Like as soon as you meet someone, it's like that scene in Step Brothers. Did we just become best friends? It really happens that quick. So I think that is the, the vehicle that knocks down the barrier in a way is just like uh, you actually want to know what – someone's up to that's inside that uh, food truck or what that artist, how they thought of what it is that they're live painting right now, you know? And that's because they're, those people are like, they're displaying their uniqueness and bringing their uniqueness to the group. Whereas in a typical, especially corporate service job of any kind, you're almost like being forced to play the role of a faceless uh, servant, like, mass produced servant in a way it's weird i couldn't agree more but yeah no it it is so much fun and sometimes we're like oh my gosh like this is so much work this is so much work because the hours it's you know you're working in these environments way yeah people don't sleep much it's a long hours we gotta be there you know and we're like wait we get to we get to conversate with people all day. We get to have real, genuine conversations with people about their lives and what you know what makes them tick and what I don't know what's going on in their head, their creations. Like we wouldn't have had space group, we wouldn't have met you. It was it was so it's just so awesome. Like you know we get to we get to have this little box, you know that we stand in and. I don't know. People want to come up to it. (laughs) And you serve people delicious treasure treats. I mean, it's literally like it's if you had come across something like space fruit hundreds of years ago and you served it to somebody, they would like alert the king and the king would be calling you like, I need this. This is going to be your magic is required for my kingdom or whatever. You know what I mean? Like no one would have had refreshments that amazing. You couldn't even free shit just until fairly recently. So Simple as it is, it's actually real kind of uh, – it's one of those everyday magical things that is easily taken for granted. But I felt like I got as stoked as you guys were just by being around you. So I feel like that's also an indication of that you guys you're, – you're likely to be successful keeping at this. <laughs> what are some of the places you've been around to uh, this year? Like how far and wide have your travels been with the with the truck yeah we we moved out to denver about uh nine months ago yeah more it'll be like a year central, in october yeah more of a central location in the u.s so we could kind of do more festivals instead of being down in florida you know can't other really advantages to uh, denver as well yeah oh, yeah definitely <laughs> plenty of advantages <laughs> we love it there but um got a really good family there but it's cool to move around too because we go we then went down to new mexico Taos. Music on the mothership yeah house Cool little event down there in the desert and uh, Arkansas. Awesome people, Arkansas, of course, for backwoods and yeah, uh, Sonic Bloom. Sonic Bloom, right there in Colorado. Yeah, so that was yeah, that's where we met you in Arkansas. Let's see Taos, and then this the last few weekends we've actually been working with our our Thai noodle friends. Yeah, but a truck called Bombay Station. Which yeah, is some good homies of ours. We. Went out to uh, Pennsylvania, did the back-to-back with uh, Bisco and Peach. Definitely a lot of fun out there. Crazy kids, crazy energy. And uh, then we it was more laid back. We went out to Virginia for Floyd Fest. Much more of like a family-oriented festival. Bluegrass. Like bluegrass. 18 years in the running, you know, and they just, they have it dialed yeah. down to just love, man. It's a good festival out there in Virginia. But Taos to Floyd, Virginia, that's pretty far. I mean... It, you get to see a lot and it, 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 it's so different. Yeah. You get to see cool. your own country. Went to a bunch of States and never thought I'd get to go to, you know, and get to serve this fruit to everyone. In a Before short that. time too. Yeah. Yeah. Really short amount yeah, of time. Exactly. But hopefully over the years, you know, we'll get a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have more time in each state, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I, I can't wait to keep growing. Like we're babies. We are brand new. Yes. It'll be our first year. Festival like a one-year anniversary at Dance Festopia this year. For vending at music festivals. Yeah, for that vending was, at music yeah. festivals. We literally rolled up last year. It was like 
Oh my gosh. It was so funny. We rolled up last year. We had never vended a festival, worked in a merch booth ever. Like we just loved festivals yeah, and our friends and it, we just wanted to be there. And yeah, we rolled up with our food truck and well, it's a trailer actually, but it was, it was so funny. We were like, Oh my God gosh like this is intense yeah like, we were pretty nervous these people first. all know what they're doing because they do it like 25 weekends in a row like they're set up tear down set up tear down and we just got there and we're like we don't even know what to do yeah. it was so funny oh my gosh i what a i wish someone would have, like took a picture of my face i i, I looked scared yeah <laughs> but then what happened next i i imagine you guys just did started doing shit and it worked out right <laughs> It, totally huge acceptance from the community for yeah. sure which is i mean ultimately the reason we got into festivals and to begin with was just we felt so accepted even when we'd go with a general admission ticket you know just felt so accepted by the community and just love and it was awesome i think that's actually one of the biggest reasons why i thought it would be cool to have you guys on was just to show how like because you guys are fairly early in the journey and you guys can really express how Anybody could just drop what they're doing and have their own space fruit type of lifestyle. You know, yeah. it's just yeah. really about how bad do you want it and how like are you going to take steps and start trying things or are you going to just stand there and go, I don't know what to do and stop there, you know? Oh, we're clueless. And that's like I think that's what you miss maybe at the like later stages, you know, after years, it's like, you kind of forget that like feeling maybe yeah, that, of being like, you forget that stress and anxiety when you've been yeah. doing it for years. But right now, you know, still being brand new, definitely like <laughs> super intense sometimes. But it adds to, I think it adds to like our energy too. Cause we get so excited and we meet, we're like, Oh my gosh, you guys, come on over here. I just can't wait to tell you about my fruit. You don't even have to buy it. I just want to tell you about it because this, this shit is so cool. Yeah, like, don't, you, don't have to buy space, you can just come hang out. You know, yeah. Be I believe you guys yeah. get free samples too. Oh, unlimited yes, samples. of course. Yeah. Always free samples. That would be silly not to. I mean, it's, it's kind of a cra crazy rare thing. Like, yeah, it's kind of hard yeah. to sell. It's kind of hard to sell a, a product that no one's ever seen or heard of because uh, it's, you know, brand new to the world. So it's kind of, yeah, we have to do free samples just so people can at least just know we're not, you know, a bunch of hippies putting weird stuff in cups, you know, it's actually pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so have you guys thought about branching out to, or does, you said it's like a, a family thing, right? Does your fam, did other members of your family come up with this and they have, uh, they sell in Florida perhaps? Uh, yeah, they, what actually happened was it was like my dad and his college roommate about 15 years ago, they kind of have been, I've just been figuring out how to freeze oranges and liquid nitrogen and uh, preserve the fruit. You know, it's a, it's an excellent way to preserve the fruit for as long, as, as long as you want. If you have like an orange on the counter, you know, it will go bad over a couple of days or weeks or whatever. But if you freeze it in liquid nitrogen, you can preserve all the nutrients and natural sugars and stuff in the, in the, in the pulp sacks. So yeah, that's what we do. So we can haul it all around the U S and keep it fresh and frozen, you know? And they actually, the whole mission, which is like really cool. This is why we can feel so good about like our product and just what we are serving to people. Uh, so they're actually, you know, producing this with the intention of um, infiltrating public school. Well, not just public schools, schools to replace just like crappy, you know, unhealthy snacks and yeah, vanilla stuff ice cream in their and lunches. Pudding, you know, get that out of the kids' yeah. lunches. And uh, get some space through in there because, I mean, it tastes even better than pudding anyway. You know? yeah. And it's good for you. And then just the name and like the little alien on the package would make a kid go crazy. They'd be like, yeah, that's what I want. So that's what <laughs> yeah, like a cool, uh, cool logo. Yeah. That's great because you have – you're killing multiple – birds with one stone oh poor birds i don't like that phrase poor what do i say oh, that? <laughs> but you oh, are okay. you are birds. what you are doing though is pretty awesome you're get you're you're working towards an even higher goal of actually benefiting humanity in a, a way of like okay here's a, a good way to preserve food which is useful because so much food gets wasted in the world yeah. and then b here's an alternative to garbage that is so popular with uh, everything that the corporate 
masters want to provide for whether it's children or prisoners or people who are fast right. food junkies. I don't know. It's, yeah. uh, oh, totally. Yeah, it's it, really cool. It really is. Yeah. I wish we could uh, just have space food right now for you, you know? Actually, we do have some space food here. Oh, I know. I mean, we can't ship it. Oh, yeah. At the moment. You can't well, hand it through the screen years. to me. Can't hand it through the screen. Oh. <laughs> a couple more years. <laughs> like, well, wait, yeah, you guys should get distributed. Yeah. I hope you guys get it distributed into like grocery stores and stuff too. That would just be cool to see it expand. Like, I'd love to, in 15 years from now, go to a grocery store in any state and be like, oh, I'm getting some space fruit as opposed to ice cream. <laughs> That'd be pretty it would, yeah. It would be really crazy. Yeah. I think eventually it'll get there as well. I mean, yeah. eventually, you but know, there's goal, baby yeah, steps. But The goal right now is definitely to get into the public schools and keep it kind of one of those niche items that you really can only get at schools or amusement parks. Kind of you know. like Dippin' Dots did not used to be in vending machines and yeah, you, you couldn't can. get it in those little bags everywhere it is kind of like a, a, a novelty special, it's a novelty we a call novelty, it yeah. eclectic dessert as we can for the application yeah we do we apply when we gotta be creative holes. we yeah. say that we're in the eclectic dessert truck that's like what we do so well, when you guys like, this is sort of a, a component of magic I, it, that i'm aware of is that whenever you create something whether it's uh a fictional character in a novel you're writing or an idea for something like space fruit, the more that you put energy towards it, the more it becomes almost like a living entity in and of itself. That's like a character and it wants, it wants to do things in a, almost a weird way. And it starts guiding you. Have you guys experienced that since creating space fruit? Absolutely. I, I mean, yeah, people, once you have the name and you, and you make something, you craft something. You're absolutely right. It starts crafting you back. Yeah. It's like, oh, follow me this way. These people are like, oh, space fruit. They call you up because you have something. It's not just. Yeah, so I'm a little bit different. You know, yeah. You know it's also kind of weird. We go to festivals. A lot of kids will run up and be like, oh, man, I, I, we saw you at the last festival. You know, how are you guys doing? And uh, it's just cool because if we didn't have space fruit, I maybe would have like never had ran into those people unless I had a totem or something with the same flag every festival. But this is kind of like our totem, you know, this is, people don't even remember my name. They just, they know space fruit and they know I work there from my face. Yeah. You know, and they're all our there. friends. Yeah. They're everyone's, we, our everyone's friends, our friends. Awesome. We'll talk for, we'll talk to you for like three days straight. If you just come up to our booth. Okay. <laughs> what are some of the craziest things that you've been told by uh, customers that just like, drop something on you <laughs> you know a lot of people at festivals uh, they're a little iffy at first they're they're kind of they see space fruit they don't know what it is they come up in a lot of a lot of people ask if there's drugs in yeah <laughs> we all everybody thinks we're like dosing them yeah, or something because it's so like they don't really realize it's different. actually kind of hard to get into the festival sometimes and you got to do a whole bunch of stuff and you know and you can't just show up, you know, and sell whatever. But some people don't know that. Yeah. You know, so they're they're kind of iffy about it at yeah, first. Yeah, like, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> they let us in here in the, in yeah. the truck. We're not just... We're not just here to toast people. It's it's hilarious, though. It's like, actually more of, like, a yeah. yeah, and then you see a little kid eating it, and they're like, oh, okay, it's probably fine, you know? <laughs> that's funny. That's, well, that's where some people's minds are at festivals. You could just make a field with no music and everyone come camp in it. And some people would come there just to like trade drugs with each other. Totally. Oh <laughs> my know? gosh. It, big, big old meet up. Yeah. It's so funny though. Like, Oh, they'll look at you like so concerned. They're like, oh, is, there, is there drugs in this? And you're like, no, <laughs> yeah. no, it's just fruit. It's like literally better. Or my favorite is like, like, well, is it good for you? I'm like, this is better for you than anything you've done this week. Like, yeah. trust me. Like, this is the best choice you'll make all weekend. Literally, I'm not kidding. I can attest to one thing. Since I started getting more fruit into my diet that was fresh, organic fruit, basically what I had to start doing was morning smoothies. And it turns out for me, my digestion really likes to have fruit as the first thing that I eat in a day. Mm -hmm. And yeah. having a smoothie almost is almost more of a mental focus enhancer and energy booster maybe definitely more of one than a cup of coffee. It's crazy. It really gets me wired in a non-shaky way. Like I'm 
just ready to go if that's how I kick things off. So that's definitely the advantage of space fruit. Like you said, it can sober you up. Like we're going on about space fruit, but I feel like it's such a miraculous concept. Uh, <laughs> like we could probably <laughs> talk about the like the positive effects of fruit for a really long time. There's even some people who claim that they live on only fruit, although I haven't actually witnessed that before. Me neither. No I mean, way. That's cool. We should we should research them and find out where they live. Yeah. That'd be probably a good place to set up, huh? <laughs> yeah, they'd love you. <laughs> in terms of being in balance with nature and sort of have if you wanted to really take a do no harm approach even with plants, almost like whatever the next level of veganism would be, mm-hmm. then it would make sense to just stick to almost only fruits because fruits the plant is giving you a little present to try to get you to spread its seeds out it actually (laughs) wants you to eat that so it's like one of the few instances in nature where the thing being eaten is requesting to be eaten as opposed to just being taken or destroyed or killed or whatever yeah and i think that there's something about fruit i mean it grows and it's so colorful like it's like eat me like it it's literally like pick me I'm beautiful. I'm a beautiful orange on this little green tree. Should probably, you know, try me. I don't know. Fruits are also kind of cool. There's so many different kinds of fruits. So many. So we basically have unlimited flavors. Uh, yeah, unlimited flavors in the future. You know, we can kind of always be trying out new flavors. And a lot of kids give us, you know, hints or suggestions of what they want to try next. So it's pretty cool. We just got a strawberry banana in there uh, this year, which is like our newest. Yeah, flavor. we used to have a banana with berry, which was like blueberry, and but it was, I don't know. It was it was good, yeah, but the strawberry, strawberry banana everybody wanted. Them into one. So. Yeah, now we have the strawberry banana, straw nan. You ever think about too that there's probably so many more fruits in existence on planet Earth than the ones that we commonly cultivate? Exactly. That- yes. Once, I don't know, I feel like there's some sort of a weird psychic ban on exploring things beyond what's normally normally found in the grocery store. I don't know what else Absolutely. to say. It's like bizarre because I know there's got to be thousands of different types of fruit in the world and at least hundreds would have to be cultivatable. But people just yeah. kind of stick to what they know. Not <laughs> yeah. that the classic fruits that we are used to like yeah. oranges and grapes and bananas aren't great, but – there's so much exotic stuff out there that I'd love to see right. more choices open up. And also, I think the answer to that problem is to just for all of us to be more proactive with personal gardens and stuff, because then you can just grow whatever you want and get really crazy. Yeah, <laughs> show people how good it tastes, you know, when you grow yeah. something from another country or something weird, you know. And what's actually, I wanted to say this earlier, but what's really cool about the fruit that we do get So the oranges like make up the basis of all the bowls and you know, everybody loves oranges. No one likes to pick them. So that's just a bonus. Like you don't have to peel them apart, but they, they come from farmers down in Florida that like is our family friend or whatever. They, they know each other. Like there's like little, I mean, you know, maybe sometimes they're coming from bigger farms, but they are like locally sourced before they're flash frozen yeah, it's all local Florida oranges. Yeah, cool. the best oranges, and there's almost zero waste because I think the the oranges, the orange peels from there are sent off to different like cosmetology or cosmetics. Good for, good for makeup. Cosmetic the orange peels also good for like beer and stuff too. So they reuse all the peels, and they also reuse all the rind in the orange, mm-hmm. the little white uh, stringy things. That's actually being used in like some sort of medical study for like brain regeneration or something. It's really cool and really interesting what you can do with fruit besides just eat it. <laughs> yeah. And it's local. It's, I mean, local before it, like after we flash freeze it and then we take it places with us, obviously you can't always be local, but yeah. Yeah. That's, I love that part of it. I love the part that it's like really supporting like a whole, um, you know, family down in Florida. So. That's one of the other good things about when a person is able to launch their vision or their dream into reality is that it typically can result in a whole bunch of other people then getting to link up and be a part of that livelihood because not everyone's in the part of their life where they're going to be ready or even want to create something for themselves. Some people actually like 
being a helper to someone else's vision and are really, really good in that role and equally important. It gets to a point though, where, you know, you can start connecting with other people's visions, like other people's farms, as you're describing. And it becomes like this collaborative network. Everybody gets better together. It's kind of the opposite of the corporate model where one entity buys up and owns every part of the production and squeezes every last penny out of it and never actually has any human contact with the people involved with it. <laughs> the opposite would be what you guys are doing where you know the people involved in different steps of the chain, their family, friends, you know. I love that about it. And also I love what we're saying with fruit being so obviously like nature's invitation and also medicinal like you were saying, Calvin. One of my favorite quotes from I'm pretty sure this quote is by Hi Hippocrates, which is a Greek philosopher. Uh, and he said, let, medicine, let thy food be thy medicine and thy medicine be thy food. I think fruit totally applies for that. And if you have studied chakra systems too, there's e interesting correlations between different colors of fruit and the way that the fruits have beneficial effects for parts of the body. Like apples, they're red, right? Apples actually help with your colon and digestion, which is connected to your root chakra in the Vedic chakra system, which is the color red that chakra is. So whenever it comes to fruit, you can actually learn ways to help yourself using fruit, improve your health if you have certain deficiencies and stuff, just with changing what you're eating. It's oh, absolutely. And I, just being able to provide that balance for people that are – maybe even struggling to find something to eat that's not covered in grease or syrup or, you know, sometimes you get smoothies, not always, but you order a smoothie and it's the sugar and syrup and ice. <laughs> yeah. You got to tell them unsweetened almond, almond milk whenever you're getting a smoothie. Always tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if you, if you're looking for something fresh and maybe it actually really helps balance you at the same time, because now you've found something fresh, it's cold. That I think helps a lot. And the water that's in fruit is like pre-filtered by the fruit itself to be really, really good and biologically available hydration. Right. I think because a lot of the, there's like electrolyte type things going on in the fruit that help your body retain the moisture more than just drinking water. Same goes for like eating a, a cucumber or something. Watermelon is insanely hydrating. I challenge you to eat a big piece of watermelon and not have to pee pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. It is. It's super hydrating. And we, we tell people that too, you know, they, a lot of the times they mistake it as like maybe something unhealthy because we've got our aliens and space fruit. It's like, what'd you put in it? Like, you know, it, it, it's like, wow, this is just 100% fruit. Yeah. Just eat it and we, people feel better. We only called it space fruit because we couldn't figure out what to call it. It's a pretty weird product when you look at it and hold it in your hand, you know. Space well, it gives it the futuristic space. thing, which does connect it to Dippin' Dots. Because I remember Dippin' Dots always being marketed as like ice cream of the future. And then also, yeah. if, ali if aliens are advanced intelligences that like know what's good for us <laughs> then they would tell us to eat fruit because that's one of the best things you could do so yeah, it, it works all straight from the aliens yeah we always like tell people that we we got like a shipment in last week like they just dropped from like mercury or something like that you know they're like where do you get this stuff we're like no man like it literally comes from, from mercury, space yeah, yeah. from the aliens we don't know where they yeah. get it we don't know why are you asking it. that's why they think it's dosed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay yeah you're yeah, right maybe that's when we explain it too many times and we start getting a little lazy yeah we know. get lazy yeah yeah it's yeah it's it's like aliens, it's like four like days that. later and we're and we're trying to talk about our fruit and we're like oh i think it would be fun to just tell people yeah that it came from mars or something it almost could have come from Mars. It's yeah. pretty crazy. <laughs> and, and like you said, like Dip and Dust, they said, uh, yeah, they're the ice cream in the future. And they really are, you know, like no one's really done anything like that since. But with Space Fruit, we're kind of like the fruit of the future. You can, uh, you know, preserve it, keep it as long as you like. And it's always going to taste amazing when you eat it. Kind of futuristic, too, in that aspect. Mm -hmm. 
So where do you guys see yourselves moving in the future? Well, not like moving to live, but where do you guys see space for going in the future? Do you have ideas about expanding what it is you're offering at the truck? Do you have thoughts of other type of ventures that you'd like to get involved with and maybe even let other people run your truck for you more? Like what's, what are you guys dreaming of? Um, well, right now it's pretty cool because we can go to a festival and, we, and they'll give us six, you know, four, four to six wristbands for, you know, and so then we can invite our friends and be like, Hey, you know, we can't, we're not making enough money to maybe like pay you a bunch or whatever, like another food truck, but or we're, we're still working our way out yeah, of we're, our, we're still our, working our way out of, you know, we got to pay off some stuff, truck off but it's stuff, cool to so. be able to give them a free wristband and free transportation to the festival, you know, and then free food because food, yeah. you can always trade all your food with other vendors, which is awesome. So it's kind of, it's, a, it's fun in that aspect. And definitely in the future, I could see maybe having more than one space route just so we can hit more than one. Oh, festival absolutely. At a time. We I, totally, well, right now, you know, like I said, we're babies. So we're like, all right, just like, let's get this thing. Let's get this thing going. Let's be at, you know, festivals every weekend with this thing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, when we get to a point that we're just comfortably vending and out yeah, and about gets out there a little bit more People yeah it is. i would love to have a second truck eventually yes and we have amazing yeah. friends that are already pretty stoked to be the ones that are going to be running that trailer and pulling that around so <laughs> yeah, we, we're very blessed with the help that we have from our friends yeah. i would help that sounds like a fun weekend gig honestly like we were saying before, it's not insanely complicated. You just scoop no. the fruit. I mean, <laughs> you just scoop the fruit and yeah. give it to the people, you know? And that's and why people want to help. Once in a while, collect some money for it. But uh, <laughs> uh, for the first little bit here, we're definitely going to be just trying to push the product and uh, yeah, show the world kind of what it is. Like, we're not trying to pull any weird thing. It's just, just really well, basic, awesome fruit. Tastes amazing. Another thing I know that you guys like, you, you know, just space fruit, we... Um, we really want to get like creative with it and use it like in different ways. Like we did try in Taos, New Mexico doing like these space fruit smoothies. So you use the space fruit or the smoothie and then you top it with it. And like, yeah, it looks so cool. Fill it two thirds with smoothie and then it's already got the pulps and oranges in it. And then we uh, add a whole bunch, bunch of space, space fruit, fruit on top, you know, so there's like two inches yeah. of just space fruit. And then it, through. It looks so, so like we were calling them like stoner smoothies. Like it looks so like delicious and like munchy. Like I don't know. Then you can start adding stuff like granola for the yeah. hippies. Like and we've been, we've been right. thinking of that. I was thinking like acai bowls. That, that was like my yeah. like, however you pronounce. I don't know. It's like a huge debate. Whatever. And then I definitely but, want to do where we. I want to like get a pineapple, you know, and core it out. And maybe chop it in half and like fill the whole pineapple with a whole bunch of space fruits. So then you get all the juices from the pineapple in there, which is just awesome. And then uh, so you can serve it's like a big old party like party, party pack, bowl, you know, yeah. a big old party bowl to a bunch of bros or yeah. something, a bunch of girls, or whatever. So that'd be cool. Like, <laughs> bros and girls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you guys could also just in general use it for a place to sell personal crafts or arts if you ever started having the desire to uh, explore different creative mediums, you know, because once you're, once you're there, you you could be, you could start a space fruit clothing line if you wanted to. (laughs) Hey, we have t-shirts. We we have t-shirts at a couple festivals and we're getting some more made up, but I'm, I always want to do like, you know, space fruit hat pins or lighters, rolling papers and stickers. But absolutely. I'm like, we one thing that we do really enjoy doing is using space for it kind of as like a platform platform or vessel for other people that are like, Hey man, you know, I'm trying to sell these posters. Would you mind just like, you know, and it's got like their original art on them and they're really awesome. And yeah, you know, it's cool to like yeah. be, you know, maybe help out with their, with their art project or with their so ideas. Can see their art too. Yeah. So they don't have to walk around. Yeah. With them, so they can just put it in one central location yeah. and have people kind of see it throughout the week. See if it connects. Which we love also because then we get to, I mean. Yeah. Look at awesome art. All yeah. And if space fruit couldn't spark the conversation, then maybe, you know, someone's art did. Yeah. And that's that happens really much. fun. Yeah. We, I love yeah, it's that. Synergy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Man, sounds like Space Fruit is really turned into a fun 
lifestyle for you guys. I'm curious, I guess if I had one question that I was thinking of before I came in here, it was what got you into music festivals in the first place? What was sort of the bridge into this world for you guys? Like, I know that everybody's first festival is one of the weirdest experiences of their life, almost like a rite of passage. And yeah, I'm curious, like if you have any good festival synchronicity stories or like, you know, how the magic got sparked in you guys to want to be doing something other than, you know, going and finding a job in an office somewhere or, or whatever regular normies do. Um, yeah, office jobs kind of freak me. I tried office. one last winter, actually, yeah. just for fun. And it was like, I'm I'm good there. So I would say how I started getting into festivals was I met Bree. Uh, we went even to the same high school, but didn't know each other because it was so big. <laughs> That's we true. Yeah, Michigan. we went to the same high school and we didn't know each other in high school. Yeah, growing up in Michigan, we would always hear the Festival Electric Forest. And back in 2014 or 15, one of the years. Brie one brought, of the years. Uh, they, they, uh, <laughs> the Electric Forest actually sent her an extra wristband, and, uh, which is probably they did. the first thing that I knew, like, this is where I need to go. They're sending out free wristbands yeah. once in a while. That's all a right. really lucky break. It was yeah. the luckiest break. But I, it's all you know. I got two wristbands. Yeah, this is like the coolest thing ever. Like my first music, this was my first music festival. It wasn't that long ago. We're really young. I'm 20. He's I'm 22. Yeah. Like, seriously, like this was a few years ago, three and a half, four years ago, whatever. Um, I get I get my my little electric forest, you know, they, they send them in the little bags, comes to my door and I open it and there's two wristbands in it. Yeah. Yeah. So she two. invited me to go and uh, <laughs> just the first thing I remember was like, everyone seemed to fit in when I went, when I showed up there and I would be in the middle, like watching music, you know, people were just so inviting and so kind. Yeah. And I don't know if it was because it was our first time and or not, you know, but then year after year you start to realize no that's just how it is people are just really that genuine here and want to get to know you and so now we kind of started space fruit in a way so when you meet people for the first time like you can make it special for them how how people yeah went, people went so far out of their way to make our first festival so special you know and kind of get yeah. us into the family or so to speak whatever yeah and i just it's really cool to be able to yeah. do that to other people so i just remember the like intense emotions i had so i was just so happy you know and everyone was just so kind it's just it's just really cool to be able to spread that now to other people just how people yeah. spread it to us and we tried not to talk about like too much you know oh you should have i mean well we haven't been doing it for that long but a lot of people oh you should have seen this when it was this or you should have, and we just try to make everybody's first experience whether that's first experience eating space fruit um, first experience at a festival. Yeah, first time meeting someone. You know? Yeah, you you try to make it like it's just so special. Like it was never better. It can never be better. Does that make sense? It's like here and now. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So just not talking too much about oh well, yeah, we should have done this or oh we you know we liked it better back when they did this or you should have seen it before they had 50,000 people. Like, you know what I mean? So it's actually, it's actually cool to just like, you know, even if it's not perfect, it's perfect. And yeah, just be creating, positive and spread yeah. positivity. It's yeah. basically why we do it. You know, man, that makes so much sense because it doesn't matter if the festival you're at or where, whatever you're doing in your life, right. In this present moment is in some way, you could describe it as inferior to some other time that something similar happened or whatever, no matter what comparatively the present moment you're in is like relative to some other moment, you have the same exact opportunity in every present moment to just choose to be stoked about life anyway, to choose to be happy mm -hmm. and infectiously uh, positive instead of just because you can always in the same way, think of an excuse why something does suck in some way and man we we, we forget that <laughs> yeah we we forget it all the time right like we're con yeah. all of us do we constantly find little things to complain about or we think we're disguising it in a joke or maybe sometimes it does work in a joke form because you can uh, diffuse it with laughter but right. it, in general just choosing to be really excited is, and really happy and loving in every moment as if it is literally the best moment that ever happened 
That's sure. how you create more moments that are the best moment that ever happened. <laughs> exactly. And I think that's, I think that's how we felt when we went to our first festival, it was almost like this thing that we were doing had never happened before and it'll never happen again. Even though electric forest has been going on for a while and it was Roth Berry and people are vets and you know, it'll keep going on. But that, that thing that we were doing, that music festival, it was like, you know, like I said, something that had never happened before and something that'll never happen again, which I mean, every, I was there that year. There we go. I probably met you. There you go. Didn't even know it. Magical. (laughs) So guys, I think I'm actually cool to at about right now, start asking you if you have any wrap up things to tell people about like what you want to do online like where to direct you to uh where to direct people to hear more about space fruit see more about space fruit do you guys have like a website is it just the facebook our we just bought a domain so we're working on the website yeah, it's getting there yeah so uh space fruit truck so space fruit truck is kind of like our tag on everything um we're mostly i would say facebook or i think instagram, instagram yeah. is like our biggest yeah and we're we're like we're kind of getting working on our social media. We're working on posting more. Yeah. We have started our Instagram, I think is probably our best platform. It sounds kind of crazy, but if any of the people listening in, I mean, if you could go give that a follow and then you could follow us around, but it helps so much for when we do the applications online. Uh, some of the festivals or some people like they, they, they want to know how many followers you do have. They want to know that you're just, and we hate that. Yeah, we it is it. so funny. It, it is gar- so, it's lame right now. So we annoying. Do yeah. Social media anyway. Yeah. And it's just, but it helps us like we have in a to. weird way. Yeah. So, um, you know, to be noticed. Or uh, so that we can keep vending, <laughs> we can keep going and getting into things yeah. and um, networking and meeting with people. But, well, you can leverage that necessity with possible more creative expression, like we were saying. So that yeah, could exactly. work out in your favor. Yes. That's cool. Maybe we can talk later about what website stuff. I'm pretty good at web design. Might be able to help you guys oh, with something awesome. simple and yeah. elegant. Yes. There might be more than one reason for us knowing each other. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh that's awesome. Reasons, I'm sure. Yeah. I am excited about this friendship. Um, but I really just wanted to say that like Space Fruit started as an idea in like a car, like with our friend. We seriously were, we went to Okeechobee Music Festival, we got a popsicle, and we were like, wait, Kelvin's dad and his family friend, like, have something way better than this? Then a, okay, okay, I'm not, uh, popsicles are great, but uh, it's no, cool, it's not no, better, no it's better different. It's different. Right, right, they have something No, it's better. Different. Uh, <laughs> it's just more out there. It's more wild, you know? So, oh, there were good pops. They put avocado in some of them. It's crazy. So, anyway, um, we're, like, sitting in the car. We're like, let's start a food truck. You know, it was one of those, like, one of those ideas yeah, that you're sitting, like, how cool it. would it be? You know, but it, it's not, like, how cool would it be? It could be. Like, every little idea that you have with your friends are sitting here going, oh, yeah, let's start taking videos like no just just do it if you want to do it and if like you're at the right place in your life to do it and things will just start falling into place we're still clueless like we we, sometimes we're just like i don't uh, we don't know what we're doing we don't know what we're doing we don't know what we're doing and then it falls into place and go for it just seriously go for it and get get help from friends because our space is a huge collaboration with a lot of our our uh, family friends and friends from back home when we yeah. went to, uh, you know high school and stuff yeah do a lot of our graphics and designs and t-shirts and all that kind of stuff it's we wouldn't be able to do it without friends and awesome people like you so like that's what i would say to people is like don't be afraid to get help because a lot of people are really right. excited just to be doing something really like you know yeah just helping, helping. they love it yeah. yeah that's great advice guys for sure especially for anyone that wants to just launch a whatever idea they have like it literally applies to everything wherever you feel wherever you feel like something is kind of stressing you out or you can't figure out how to do it there's no reason why you couldn't possibly find someone to take that job or that task off your hands for you Mm -hmm. exactly 
there's there's parts of it that we know how to do very well and other parts we don't know anything yeah and like i get so stressed but i find if i just like talk to someone like a lot of the times you know okay so i'm trying to do this tax form or something the unglamorous side of things you know the Um, worst yeah the worst the worst side of things it really it really is so i yeah government is slavery Oh gosh. Yeah. Sometimes they don't have a choice. They just, you know, they come in hot. They're like, you got to fill this out. And you're just like, no. And then I stress over it. You know, I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I didn't take this class, you know? So, um, they, you know, my, my friend will come up with something and they're like, well, let's just do it. You know, if you're wrong, like it can be corrected. Yeah. You're fine. Like, <laughs> just do it. Yeah, it's you, fine. As it's, long as you do it, you really can't mess up. Yeah. You can tweak it along the way. There's no it. mistakes, just stuff you don't know yet. Right. Wait, what, right. What's Bob Ross always Bob saying? Ross. No mistakes, just l- happy little accidents. Happy little accidents. Yeah. yeah. Just turn all those mistakes into little UFOs. Perfect. Oh, okay. You Instead of birds, like Bob Ross does birds, but you guys would do UFOs. Yeah, yeah. we do UFOs and like Aliens oranges. Dope, so. oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I think I think we accomplished the mission of inspiring people about space fruit and getting them probably curious to try it. If we, if I had just heard someone talking about delicious frozen dip and dot style f- shredded fruit for that long i probably would be really wanting to try it so we're super weirded out <laughs> yeah right you said you only have that one new uh, event coming up but if people follow you on social media they'll be able to see where you guys are going to be going absolutely you know, next all, year yeah. all the festivals yeah. and everything yeah. for sure and we have like yes yeah, so we'll have uh, dance festopia and then Lost that's Land. near my neck of the woods and then yeah, out in Missouri. yeah yeah so then after that i think it's just um we, we might possibly get accepted into things still for the, the later half of September. Yeah, we hope. But totally follow us. We'll always tell you where we're going. Um, and we cannot wait to share it. Like, we will be so excited and every we're, time. We're still a super small company. So if you give us a DM or a message, it's either me or Bree getting back to you. So that's all. Yeah. Right. And so. if you tell us you saw us on or you heard us on interviews, probably going to give you some, oh, some space for you're getting right some there. free space yeah. For you. <laughs> yeah this is this is really cool i hope that happens i, I love yeah. it this has been a really fun chat guys i guess yeah. thanks for coming on and we'll have you on in the future and hear more about your adventures and your perspectives as they continue to evolve i wish you guys the best of luck with space fruit i really do hope everyone out there listening someday somehow gets a chance to try it if they don't go out of their way running at full speed right now to try to find you, then <laughs> may the uh, universe lead you guys together. <laughs> <Sooner than later. laughs> That's awesome. Hell Thank yeah. you so much, Chance. Well, well, people, we have finally been dropped back off by the Mothership Fruit Truck. Thanks, Bree, Kelvin. It was awesome talking to you guys again. Really happy that we became friends on that mountain in April on 420. What an appropriate day. So speaking of mountains, I wanted to remind you guys again about the Gathering Mountain Festival at the farm near Eureka Springs, September 14th, 15th, and 16th. We talked about it in the last episode with Desiree, but I would like to now announce that I'm actually going to be not only there with a booth, but apparently doing a live podcast. So if you want to see me for my first time bringing this thing on stage, and not only that, but you get to meet me and we'll be doing some audience audience participation in the actual live podcast as well. If you want to you know, join us for that, it'd be cool if you came to the Magic Festival. I guarantee there's going to be something or somebody there that you like and you have a fun time being there. I've never been to a festival I didn't like. So... You know, if maybe music festivals aren't even your thing, you might like this type of a gathering. Anytime a bunch of people get together with sort of creative goals in common, awesome stuff happens. So I really do hope to see you guys there. Hopefully you kind of caught some of that spark just from this conversation because we talked a lot about festivals in general. And remember, follow Space Fruit on Instagram. Help them get into more festivals, maybe one that's nearby you. Or maybe even request they come to something that you've got going on. I'm sure they'd like to entertain the possibility if they're not already booked of coming to wherever you're at because it sounds like they love to travel. Part of what was so inspiring about talking to them, they're young and instead of thinking about, you know, how am I going <laughs> to 
establish my multi-million dollar career or whatever they're like how am i going to travel a lot what is a plane ticket how am i going to like how do i get more plane tickets to places that i want to be that is magic lifestyle right there and if you are interested in getting a little more of their perspectives on life and talking about some things beyond just space fruit we had a plus extension with Bree and Kelvin where we talked about the festival doppelganger effect, which is always freaky when you see people that look exactly and sound exactly, maybe even have the same name as somebody you know. There's weird experiences like that that many of us can relate to. And like I was mentioning, they talked a lot about their traveling nomadic dream life. And then a very important topic of talking about influencing the world through personal authentic authenticity instead of some kind of brute force type of persuasion or coercion method and we talked about developing as an individual instead of following the crowd and how festivals play into that we talked about exploring our infinite potential as artists of our own lives and the potential of space fruit to travel and make travel and festival videos in the near future which will be pretty cool to watch and we talked about some other upcoming festivals this year that we are excited for. So very festive podcast in general, but I really love festivals, as I said. That's why I really do hope to see you guys at the Gathering Mountain, if possible. I'll do my best to record something of that live show. That way I can release it to the, at least to the Patreon people. I might keep that like as a Patreon special, and that would be cool. Thank you, patrons. You guys are awesome. And if you do not have the funds or the desire to subscribe on Patreon and send me some financial energy for what I'm doing here, no hard feelings. Really nice of you to be checking out the show anyway. If you don't want to go to patreon.com forward slash interverse, why not pop up, open your iTunes podcast app, search for the show there, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and just for free and takes about five seconds, leave a five-star review, and that actually helps new people who are interested in similar stuff to find our show for the first time. And everybody wins the more that we expand this thing because then we'll get even more interesting synchronicities and serendipities occurring and even wider reach to make contact with genius people from all walks of life, as we have been doing. Thank you for listening. I really do love doing this. <laughs> I hope you guys check out in Theo which is the music, this cool ambient stuff that I put in the background here. I'm about to go travel all the way to Idaho from where I'm at, Missouri. So wish me luck on that. If you remember last year, I told you guys about a documentary project that Haley and I are working on. And so we're going to go do a little more filming for that. All very good prognoses for this upcoming trip. So I'll tell you more about it. Maybe even get a podcast in on the road. We'll see. But thanks for listening. Love you guys, and I hope you're all as inspired as I was to hear from Bree and Kelvin. Big thanks to them for coming on the show. Really love those kids. Okay, see you later. <laughs>